start with the Anthony Davis Giannis Antetokounmpo head to head game tonight in Milwaukee. Uh, Davis's Pels have won seven of the nine meetings head to head, but the Freaks Bucks are a different animal this season. And Seiko, in a lot of ways, these two are the embodiment of positionless basketball in the NBA. You're talking about bigs with very high usage rates, expected to do a lot of different things for their teams. Yeah, and, and really they are what I would say is the future of the league in terms of jumbo sized guys who are as versatile as, uh, you know, a 6'3 point guard might have been, you know, in a, in a previous right. era of the league, Matt. It's, I don't know that we could have seen Giannis coming the way we did AD. We knew it when he was in college at sure. Kentucky that he had a chance to be one of the elite players in the league. Then he goes and plays in the London Olympics and gets an opportunity to be around the, the current at that time, elite stars, and they all raved about what he was going to be. Right. Giannis has been one of those pleasant surprises that we get in this league where you didn't know how good he could be. You knew he had talent and the raw materials. Yeah. But this, what he's doing now, has been off the charts. Drafted entirely on potential, really. He was playing a low-level Greek league. They knew he was tall. They knew he was long and rangy. He'd been handling the ball there some, but they didn't see this coming. They Nobody saw this coming when John Hammond and the Bucks drafted him. No, and, and I love the revisionist history, how everybody, you know, all the GMs that didn't draft him would have drafted it. No. If only no. give John Hammond and yeah. that Bucks staff at the time a lot of credit for going out on a limb and drafting a guy that, you know, this is a league, a copycat league in a lot of respects, Matt, where you're always trying to, uh, you know, reproduce something else that's been successful we've already seen. We never saw Giannis. We've never seen a guy no. who can dominate in the paint the way he does without it being a back-to-the-basket offensive performance. We're talking about a guy who faces the rim at all times but is dominating in the paint the right. way, you know, if you look statistically like a Shaq did in his day. If you just look at numbers and points around the basket. Sure, around the basket, and he's dominating as a guy who handles the ball a ton, still doesn't have a reliable three-point shot. In fact, by NBA standards, he's a terrible NBA three-point shooter and is still getting wherever he wants to go, even with that uh, three happy bucks offense and doing, for the most part, whatever he wants offensively. Well, and the, and the interesting part is we see him on these warm-ups all the time. He's out working on his shot. He's out putting in all of the work to, to improve but he's not rushing it in games, right. which is what I like about the way he's playing. Why would you not take advantage of all the things you can do if you're Giannis Antetokounmpo now and, and wait until you get proficient at that three-point shot to really unleash it and start taking it? You know Mike Budenholzer wants him to be a threat from that distance right. in his offense because that's what's made some other guys, Al Horford, Paul Millsap, previously into all-stars in that system. Giannis is already there. He's already a star. You don't have to worry about that. He becomes that next level star when he does get that three point shot down. It's interesting because we've been saying that for years now, and he's nowhere near that at this point in his not career. Yet. He's just not a good three point shooter. Uh, Davis is spectacular. The numbers are incredible again, but it hasn't translated into consistent winning for the New Orleans Pelicans. I know they've had injuries, including some tonight, but they've basically, over the last couple of weeks, not basically, they've been a win loss, win loss, win loss team. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that when, when they came back into this season, our expectation for the Pels was based on the way they went through the postseason last year. Sweeping Portland, right. competing, you know, competing at least with, with Golden State, not coming close to winning the series or anything crazy like that, but at least putting up a fight. We just assumed that they would come back and take that next evolutionary step as a group, and they haven't quite put their finger on that at this point of the season. I think there's still time. But now you've got all this other drama swirling around Anthony mm -hmm. Davis's name. Yeah. LeBron being asked about him. Free agency that doesn't exist for another season and a half for this guy. Right. Is a hot right. topic. You wonder how much that wears on Anthony Davis and the Pelicans in the lead up to this postseason and whether or not they get in. Well, they know, as, as we do, the clock is ticking to the time when they can offer him that extension. And he says yes or he says no. And that uh, creates a whole different framework moving forward for the Pelicans.